Okay, so let's look at some basic examples that illustrate several of the methods of proof. Okay. The first one is called a direct proof. The best way to understand this is that you are trying to solve a maze. You always start at the beginning and end at the end and go straight there. Okay. So I'm going to use some easy number theory type problems about even and oddness of numbers to illustrate these just because even and odd are things that everyone can understand. So the first method or the first theorem I will prove with a direct proof is for all numbers in the integers if n is odd then n squared minus 3 is even. All right, so to start my proof, since n is odd, because that is what I'm starting with, I'm starting with the p assumption. What does it mean to be odd? It means that there exists another integer that I will call k with n equal to 2k plus 1. Every odd number can be written thus. Then I'm now interested in n squared minus 3. So n squared minus 3 will equal what n equals squared minus 3. Let's multiply this out. And clean it up. Now, I'm trying to prove it's even. To be even means that it is 2 times some other number. And lo and behold, I can factor out a 2 here and be left with another number. Okay. And this is even. So I started with n being odd. I proved n squared minus 3 is even. That is exactly what I wanted. So I indicate I am done with my proof. My next method of proof okay, is also a direct proof, only I'm not going to prove the statement as written. Instead, I'm going to prove the contrapositive. So I'll remind you, if you have a statement P implies Q, the contrapositive is not Q, implies not P, and they are logically equivalent. Why would we do this? Well, because sometimes it is significantly easier to prove things this way. Okay. As an illustration of this, I will prove one of De Morgan's laws. Okay. Let A and B be subsets of the universal set U. Then A union B complement is A complement intersect B complement. Okay. Now I'm going to prove by contrapositive instead. So we will prove instead that a union B equals a complement intersect B complement complemented. Okay. Namely, I negated both sides of the original equality, and I'm going to prove that way instead. All right. So what does it mean to be in this right-hand side? Well, that's a complement. So it means x is not an element of a complement intersect b complement. This is true if and only if okay, x is not an element of a complement or x is not an element of b complement. Okay. This is true if and only if x is an element of a or x is an element of b, which is true if and only if x is an element of a union b. Okay. And by doing a sequence of if and only ifs, it's equivalent to a sequence of equalities. So we have the statement. Okay. The final method of proof I'm going to illustrate now is my personal favorite, largely because I'm contrary in nature. If I'm asked to solve a maze on a piece of paper, I start from the front until I get stuck, then I start from the back until I get stuck, and then I try to make those two stuck edges meet somewhere in the middle. Okay, So this is the method of contradiction. Oops, sorry about that. Namely, to prove P implies Q, what we'll do instead is we will assume P 
and not Q. If you remember, this was the only time the implication was false. So if we assume this is true and reach a contradiction, the only other thing is that this must be false, which means the implication must be true. Okay. All right, to illustrate this, I will prove a set theory concept called the absorption law. Okay, so it's that A intersect A union B is equal to A. All right, by way of contradiction, suppose A intersect A union B does not equal A. By the way, it is common practice to tell the reader what method of proof you are attempting with such a phrase like by way of contradiction. Okay. Now, clearly, A intersect A union B is a subset of A. Why? Because it's A intersect something, so everything in it had to be an A to begin with. Okay. So, the only way that I don't have equality is there must be something in A that is not an element of A intersect A union B. Okay. Now, we do know that X is an A. Okay. So the only way to not be in the intersection is that X must not be an element of A union B. Okay. But X is an element of A, so X is automatically an element of A union B. Taken together, these two statements contradict each other. So I say contradiction. Okay. Now I wrote that as a line with an X through it. Technically speaking, it's two arrows running smack dab into each other in a head-on collision. Okay. This is a contradiction. Thus our original assumption must be false. Okay. And I am done.